Hey everybody, welcome back to our neck of the woods. So in this video, I think we're gonna go ahead and knock out all the furring strips uh, for at least all the flat ceilings. I don't know if I have enough to actually do the vaulted and I don't actually know how I'm gonna be able to get up there and even do that because I still only have one piece of scaffolding which is only about six foot high or so and I don't really wanna put a ladder on top of that. So we're gonna to have to get uh, at least one to two more uh, heights of scaffolding Plus they have outriggers that you can buy, uh, obviously for safety, because obviously the higher you go, you can tip over. So at least for today, again, we'll try to knock out the flat ceiling so that we can at least be safe and uh, not have to get up that high. And we will be able to start the drywall in this video too. Uh, the local rental place does have drywall lifts that are a lot beefier and more uh, structural engineered, I guess you would say, instead of these cheap little flimsy things offline. And the good news is uh, it goes up about 50 15 feet, but again, it's a lot stiffer, but 15 feet still isn't 16. So hopefully when we move up from like basically the inside eave all the way up to the peak of the roof, hopefully the last piece we can just have like a little baby sliver or something. So that way I'm not trying to lift a 75 pound sheet of drywall up uh, that last like foot by myself. If it's just like a little one foot sliver, then uh, I should be able to put that up there by myself. But we'll have to see, we have to measure. I don't even know what the distance is from the inside eave all the way up to the peak. And the other thing I wanna kinda of do is when I get the first piece of drywall on for these scissor trusses, uh, I don't wanna use a full sheet because when that tapers in there like this, um, I don't want four feet running up this way because I don't wanna be on my belly and try and get all the way back behind there in that like little tiny triangle part. Uh, I wanna really get behind there and spray foam it. So if I do like a little two footer, then I should be able to reach back there a lot easier and hit that with spray foam, as opposed to again, a four footer where I may not be able to see what I'm doing. I wanna really make sure that we get all of that isolated and uh, air sealed and everything like that. So we'll just have to measure as we go on up and see how long that is. And uh, if a two footer starts over there and a one footer ends up here with four footers in between, then that's perfect. That's exactly what I would want want. So, but again, we just need to see what we're doing and how this is going to play out. And if I didn't mention in the last video, I don't think I did. The other reason why uh, this is kind of the most important, the reason why we're using furring strips, not only are we going from 24 inches down to 16 inches that the drywall is going to screw to, not only can we hold up a lot more weight uh, with insulation and everything, but some of these trusses based on the front and back of the house, I don't think are exactly even. In fact, even just over here in the half bath, I think uh, two trusses are even slightly off somehow. Uh, they were sitting out in the yard for a while. Again, I don't think the bottom cords are 100% flat. So if we put on these furring strips and we notice that one furring strip to another is off or that the furring strip's going like this uh, down from you know out here in the living room all the way to that back wall, we can quickly just take a hammer, hit the furring strip back down and get it to drop uh, that the nails will, will release out of the trusses. We can put in a shim, hit the nails back up and we'll get those furring strips a hell of a lot flatter so that we actually have a smooth and very flat ceiling. So that's actually the biggest thing that I want to do the furring strips that I forgot to mention. So I guess let's just get set up, get started and uh, knocking out this entire area over here.
Hey everybody, welcome back for another day. Uh, finished up last night with just finishing up this side of the ceiling. So as you can see, everything is done and the gaps in here are only because where this wall over here is moving four feet out and where the pantry wall is moving four feet out, you're gonna have that. I don't wanna waste drywall and uh, just throwing in an extra slip or a furring strip really isn't gonna hurt anything. Yesterday, I did get some stuff on video, but you guys probably wouldn't have known what the heck I was doing, so I decided just to not show it and just explain it. Inside of the pantry here, we did have to extend this wall out, so I took some two by fours and I turned them sideways, put a strip down there at the bottom, put a strip up there at top and again, turn them sideways because laundry rooms do need to be um, framed out basically in a two by six. And that's because of the dryer vent. It is a four inch solid metal pipe and you're not allowed to crush that. So obviously four inches is not gonna fit in a three and a half inch hole. So now we have five inches. So we lost an inch and a half of uh, pantry space in here, but nothing that you're ever gonna notice. But that should should give us now enough room to get the dryer vet uh, either going up and outside or going down through the basement and outside. I haven't exactly figured out how I'm gonna do that because all vents do have a maximum run that you're allowed to do. And I think every 45 and uh, 90 degree bends takes away from your overall run. So we have to be real careful with that one. But we should be fine with the bathroom vent for the exhaust fan. And if I didn't talk about this before on the Renai system, you are allowed to use PVC piping, but you just need to make sure that you're using the right PVC piping. For example, PVC usually comes with red lettering and black lettering. The black lettering is the foam core. So it's PVC outside, PVC inside, but they use basically like a foam core. You're not allowed to use that for um, exhaust waste uh, for, even though they're high efficiency and they're not gonna melt, um, you're not allowed to use the foam core. You have to use the solid red lettering, PVC plastic throughout through the entire thing. And um, my point with all that is the Renai say they have a 65 foot maximum run for the intake and exhaust. But again, you need to deduct like three feet for every 45 and six feet for every 90 degree bend. So it's a good thing we're only going up basically right there and we're gonna punch out through the gable end wall over there. So we should be under that 65 feet even though we've got roughly one, two, three, maybe three 90s, maybe four 90s and one 45 that we're probably gonna end up using. But again, that's just uh, everything that we have to deal with the dryer and the exhaust for the bathrooms and stuff, those all need to be taken into consideration for how long your run's gonna be and what bends you're gonna use. So I just put up my first sheet. It was a lot of cussing and swearing because it sucks when you've got a piece of drywall that is exactly the same size as your room. So you're not allowed to, a room to work with and wiggle it up there when you got walls on every side. But uh, this is the lift that they gave me. It's only an 11 footer. Uh, Sumner, it looks like. It's only, like I said in the video uh, earlier, they're not that expensive. This thing's only about $80 for an entire week or $40 for every day. So it makes sense just to go with a week or it's about $200 for an entire month. Now we only need this 11 footer for the ceilings in here, but we they didn't have the 15 footer available. So we'll have to get that on a later time when we're actually gonna do the scissor trusses. But uh, today is an, an exceptionally warm day. It is comfortable in the house at 53 three degrees and outside I think it's even warmer than that uh, we're just not getting that warmth in here yet so it sucks because a 50 degree day would have definitely been a day that once I get like this laundry room for example done I can go up into the attic and I can start spray foaming all of the edges and I can spray foam uh, up where the uh, drywall meets the uh, the wall itself but uh, unfortunately the spray foam is on its way that I purchased but uh, not here yet so there's nothing that I can really do with that today so I'm gonna set up get another sheet up in here laundry room will be done then we can go ahead and do the mud room then the pantry and then we can move out here and start knocking out and seeing how many sheets we can get done today by ourselves. But again, when you're in these confined spaces, especially when we get up here into the pantry, it is going to suck. And it's a good thing we're on time lapse because I like to drop some F-bombs every now and again.
right, hopefully this stupid GoPro works, but man, am I tired. I am not even 25% done, and I can't tell you how backbreaking this is, but uh, we're getting there. As you can see, we're all the way only in this section here, straight from front to back. Uh, those furring strips are moving a little bit. I, um, I don't know why they did. I, I mean, I didn't move them, but they're not equal with the front of this wall over here in this corner and the back wall over there. So you can see the furring strip kind of kicked itself out. So I don't know if that's going to be an ongoing issue when we go every four feet down on these ones, but uh, they're all a little bit wonky for some reason. But I want to show you guys something real quick. I want to go up here and talk about just why the importance of insulation and air sealing is needed. And then uh, we'll get back to it and just keep hammering. All right, so first thing, once we get everything on, it'll be really easy to start looking down through all the cracks and everything to where we can see light coming through. So for example, we've got a crack right here we can see light through. Obviously we can see through the lights. But the biggest spot that you have to remember to air seal is where your walls come together. So for example, you can see all this light through each one of the walls. And even if we take a piece of drywall on the inside and it comes up and closes that off, just because drywall is pressed up against wood doesn't mean that that's air sealed. You're still gonna get leaking down in behind your drywall and down in there, and that's gonna get into your cavity spaces. And where that is really, really bad is over here, for example, where you have a penetration point. So obviously you can see we spray foamed right here, but the problem is if you don't spray foam that, you're gonna get air leaking down through the hole that you drilled. It's gonna go down into your cavity space, and then air is gonna to wanna to shoot out wherever you have your electrical outlet or your electrical light switch. And that's where a lot of people don't realize that's where their air leaking is coming from. They may look up at their ceiling and be like, I don't get it. My ceiling and mud and tape are all 100%. Uh, I'm pretty sure the attic has enough insulation. We should be pretty air sealed. Why is the house so leaky or feel so drafty and cold? It's because a spot like that. If you go ahead and remove some of your insulation away and you see a big old half inch hole with your wire sticking up through there, again, your light switch or your outlets, those are not airtight. You're gonna shoot air right into that box. It's gonna go up through the box's hole where the wires are coming in, out the sides, cause they all have like a, pre-cut holes where pre-cut tabs that you can smash down and bend out and those are not air sealed so once air shoots through your outlet or through your light switch it goes up through your cavity straight up through your top plate and then it's up into your insulation and that's where a lot of people where if they don't have good uh insulation up in their attic you will actually get ice uh forming and um mildew, water, uh, precipitation, etc., trying to come out through your outlets. And I'll show you some pictures that that does happen that you'll actually have ice come out of an outlet so or a light switch. So if you're not sealing up in here properly, then that's where a huge majority of your air leaking is coming from. So again, once all the drywall's on, we can have a much easier time up in here to where we can start just shooting spray foam all over everything. But if you're wondering what the heck are we gonna do about the lights like that, I'm not gonna uh, just completely spray foam that light to the top of the drywall because I won't be able to remove it and replace it one day. So what we're going to do is they make these little fire fiberglass-ish type. I don't really know what they are. They're on their way. I've ordered like 20 of them, but they're basically just a little bucket that's somewhat fireproof. It's fire resistant. They do make really, really expensive ones that are coated in fireproofing, and that will actually help with like a class one or class two fire rating score up in here. But because we're using LED lights, I'm not worried about a pot light overheating and catching the material that I got on fire because LEDs just don't get hot. But it's basically just a little bucket that you sit on top of the light and then we can spray from the perimeter of the light to the top of the drywall and that will air seal all of our lights 
but will still give us room that one day if that light ever fails, we can pull the light out of the ceiling because we're in like the inside of a bucket. We're not gonna have insulation fall on us. We can reach our hand up in there, unscrew the broken LED, replace it, and put a new one back in. So that is an awesome feature that I saw somebody else do. This is not my idea. But again, these little like, I don't even know, again, like neoprene fiberglass, they're, they're collapsible. So like, they're not like rock hard. So you can kind of fit them in spaces and stuff like that. If you're near like a joist, you can trim it out a little bit and cut it easy with a pair of scissors. But once you get it set on top of the drywall, nice, flat, and smooth, you can go ahead and put a bead of uh, foam around it and then boom, every single light that you have in your house is 100% air sealed. It gives a little bit of thermal value because that stuff's maybe like half of an inch thick. Um, so on top of it, they're about nine inches tall. So obviously you're gonna lose insulation from say 14 inches down to the top of that light. Um, but that again, that light fixture housing thing does have a little bit of R value, but you are gonna lose every light penetration point that you have in your ceiling. You're not gonna have your full 14 inches at an R49. You're only gonna have roughly an R whatever, or like basically five inches, five inches of insulation instead of a full 14. So less lights, the better. But again, uh, check these things out. I'll again, post them and link them up above this to show you what I'm talking about. And uh, yeah, we'll wait on the spray foam to come. We'll wait on those little things to come. And then again, once we knock all of this out, we can really start hitting the uh, cracks and everything with, insulate, or with spray foam as long as the temperature stays up. Hey everybody, welcome back. Uh, it is Sunday, December 18th, I think. And surprisingly, we just got our uh, little hats cover thingies in the shipping. And yesterday we got our spray foam. So. Today, as you can see, I got a little bit done off camera. We've got just a few more panels over here to go and then we'll be done with this whole side of the house. So now we can kind of a little bit focus on spray foaming and stuff like that. But uh, again, I want to pull these hats out, see what they look like, get them fitted around the lights, spray foam them down and uh, actually find out what the heck they're made out of. So again, we got our spray foam. Uh, it's been sitting in the house all day. Uh, or in the RV, so it's pretty warm, obviously like 70 degrees or so. So it should spray fine. And right now in the house, it is 50 degrees and outside it's a little warmer than 50 degrees. So it may not be a 60 degree day, but I think that's more than enough that we can go ahead and spray it, spray this stuff and it'll actually work. And this stuff does say that it's also 60 to 90 degrees Fahrenheit with 75 being optimal. But uh, it's really just a preventative measure to get into all the cracks. I do think that when we mud and tape everything that that will pretty much also be an air sealing uh, aspect of it. So not too worried about that, but again, we'll just hit it as much as we can on the uh, other side of the drywall uh, on the ceiling and really air seal this as much as we can. Our little hats, what are they? Well, uh, they look like fiberglass. Uh, it's either fiberglass or mineral wool. Um, that's probably where the R value is coming from, but hence I've got gloves on because I'm not gonna be touching fiberglass or mineral wool with my bare hands. One thing I did notice that is also on the uh, Amazon page is they had some metal wires through these things so you can actually like support and hang lights from them. They already have holes punched in them. I don't know if you can see that little hole right there, but that is something that we're gonna have to air seal because when we put this down and air seal it to the drywall, we obviously don't want air sealing or air going through that hole. So I think if actually we shoot a little bit of spray foam up in there, that'll seal the two air holes and then we'll uh, bring them up top, cut them out if we need to, to fit around, like I said, any joists or anything for at least the several lights that we have. We only have one more to do down here uh, that I need to put a piece of drywall on, which is gonna be the dining room light, and it just has a metal box fixture up there right now because uh, the dining room light is probably gonna weigh a lot. Um, and then we haven't figured out what we're gonna use over the island here. Uh, Aaron, I think, wants two pendant lights, so those shouldn't be that heavy, but we will have to, at a later time, cut out the drywall and maybe put in a reinforcement box, depending where they're gonna go and how heavy uh, of an item she actually picks. Let's pull at least several of these out for all the lights that we have, put a bead of spray foam up in that little cone there, and then we'll go up there and we'll set them all.
All right, so that's enough of those. And this actually should help out with the R value now too, because again, we're losing nine inches of insulation, uh, pretty much, you know, from inside of here down to where this isn't gonna be insulated. So over every single light, we're not gonna have an R60 that we plan on. So we're losing at least uh, eight or nine inches or so. Uh, out of the total that we need to pour in there. So at least with that much insulation, our spray foam now up in there, uh, these are a little bit more insulated and should help with the overall R value of the house. And this stuff definitely has fiberglass all over me. So good thing I put gloves on, even though they're already tearing. So let's go up there real quick. Let's set some around the lights and let's see how that works out. So yesterday I did come up here, sorry for it being dark. I did start to hit the transitions on like the walls. So like right here, you can see that is the pantry. So hitting under the two buys on top where any two, two buys come together. Again, hitting where two come together, uh, two pieces of drywall. And then obviously that's not 100% needed again because we're going to be mudding and taping down below. But right now, really the biggest thing that we have left here today is just go ahead and hitting these lights we just need to make sure that uh, the wires where the disconnect port uh, portion is is close enough to the light so some of these boxes we might actually have to move and rearrange a little bit because they're a little far away but uh, we just need to make sure that we get that disconnect there underneath of that little cap so that way we can change the light out one day all right hopefully you can see this and then editing i'll be able to turn the light up on it but again, we're just moving this box down a little bit. We'll go ahead and re-secure the wires later. But right now, I'm just basically getting the disconnect portion, uh, hopefully right, like basically sitting on top of the wire right there, or sitting on top of the light. So that way, when we go ahead and put this box down, we can go ahead and glue this side of the wire down, but we're not gluing this side of the wire down. So again, these lights can be removed one day. Okay, one down, eight more to go. Okay, so just finished up here. All of the lights are done. All the edges and stuff are done. Again, I don't know if you guys can see this, but we'll try and uh, lighten it up in editing. But we've got all down around where the drywall meets here and uh, anywhere where two walls come together. You might even see if my drywall gaps were a little big, uh, some of the foam might actually drop down uh, and go down onto the floor, but that'll be fine. We'll cut back on the spray foam when we go ahead and take the half inch drywall and we put it up there to meet the ceiling we'll just cut back the foam a little bit and then again a lot of these spots i'm hoping the mud will take care of it the the biggest thing like i had mentioned is making sure where any walls come together that the drywall is sealed to the top plate two by four and then any of the wires that come up as they go down into that cavity space you want that 100 percent air sealed so air's not getting down into your cavity and other than that this should be good enough. Uh, I have no idea what my blower door score is going to be. I know other ICF builders achieve under passive house, which is a uh, 0 0.6. 
Uh, I've seen them down as low as like 0 0.4, and uh, they're achieving it a little bit better than me. Uh, the one guy I'm talking about in particular, he actually puts up a vapor barrier first, nails it to all of his trusses, then he puts his drywall up. So that way you don't have to worry about that. But you'd still have to worry about in between uh, your walls and stuff because they're not putting the vapor barrier, I, I don't think, underneath of walls, or they're just running it up right up to a wall and cutting it, and then drywall's coming up in there, and then again, you're relying on the mud to actually seal the drywall. But you're still worried about the cavity space down in between that I would just personally go ahead and air seal with the spray foam. But again, that should drastically help uh, the next thing that we need to figure out, uh, probably in another video, I'm probably gonna wrap this one up here, but in another video, we need to start putting drywall up against this internal gable wall right here where these two bys are turned sideways. Obviously, you can see we're gonna have a gap right underneath of there. So all the light that's coming in there, even though the drywall is gonna go down and meet in like an L-shaped corner and we'll mud that, I'm still probably gonna to wanna to put beads of uh, spray foam down in there. And then I need to figure out what I'm actually gonna to do to insulate this gable end wall here. And if you guys have missed that video before where I asked, you know, what the heck am I gonna do with this wall here? I had lots of suggestions. Uh, I think the one that we ended up on is once we have the drywall hung on the outside and we spray foam down along that two by four and stuff, I think the best suggestion is probably to go ahead and get an inch and a half of like pink foam or any type of foam. And then in each one of those spaces right there, we can do basically like a cutout of uh, insulation. So we can stick it up against there, spray foam the edges, so that way you've got an inch and a half of like pink uh, rigid foam stuck to the back of the drywall. And then uh, obviously the only problem that we have to worry about is these tall spots right here, like dead set in the middle. Those spots, uh, the insulation for an R60 is only gonna come up about 17 or 18 or 19 or inches or something. So obviously that's you know on the tallest part here that may only be up to here. Well, this section right here then, that's not gonna get uh, insulation uh, blown up to it. We're only gonna have whatever an inch and a half of rigid foam is. That's probably under an R10. So we don't want these peak spots right here uh, in this unconditioned space where you've only got like uh, under an R10 insulation value right here, while you've got an R60 up to my you know knees right here, and then up in here, again, we've got another R60 blown up here. This uh, triangle part right here, that will be very low insulation. So still gotta figure out what I'm gonna do there. I could take more rigid boards, since these are only an inch and a half, I could then take like two inches or more, turn them sideways, and then stick them and screw them to the back side of this. Again, spray foaming gaps and everything, so that way we can build out this wall here, coming out thicker with rigid board. Or if I just put in that inch and a half board up in there, uh, technically I could just have a spray foam installer come by and uh, they could just spray foam the back side of these walls here on these gable ends and just build out the thickness that way. So that way we achieve like an R60 coming out here, but the spray foam won't be that expensive because we're only dealing with these little triangles here and the triangle over on the back side of the master bedroom wall. Um, but we'll have to have them maybe come out and give a quote because they could also maybe spray foam all of the eaves down over in there and down along where any of the triangles come together. So that way we're not trying to blow spray foam uh, or blow um, insulation down into those cracks. If they could just come up here real quick and just quickly get a nice big foot or so build up along the eaves and stuff, that will then tie the drywall to the bird blocks to the air channels, and that will seal everything along all of the perimeters and all of the edges a little bit better. Um, but I probably would go ahead and just spray an open cell, so that way um, we actually don't have to worry about a vapor barrier. Um, air can still leak up in through here, so we're not creating condensation and stuff uh, if it does need to dry out. Uh, I'm not a big firm believer in spray foaming closed cell, Definitely not to the top part of your decking. I know a lot of people will use closed cell on the underside of the decking, which is fine. 
But uh, again, you have to worry about, are you spraying enough spray foam up underneath of your decking there to achieve your local code's value? An enclosed cell for an R49, that would be pretty thick, almost eight inches of closed cell on the back side of your decking to achieve that. Do you need that? No, but local code, if they're like, hey man, I only see four inches of closed cell up there. That's only an R28. Uh, I understand it's closed cell and it's structural and it's a vapor barrier and it probably seals really, really well, but you're still only looking at an R28 or an R29 or something of closed cell. You need to have your minimum of R49. So that would just be a huge waste of money to spray it up on the other side of the decking. Then of course you have to worry about uh, heating and cooling all of this space up in here, which I hopefully you guys can see this on camera. I mean, I'm six foot tall and I'm not even, you know, even close to being halfway up on these rafters. We still have another seven feet or so up to the peak of that roof. So just where I'm standing alone, we're talking about 13 feet up to the peak of that roof that we would have to be heating and cooling if we did an underside decking uh, closed cell spray foam. Obviously a little bit less where the scissor trusses are, but again, this is a huge, huge, huge cubic volume of space up in here that I definitely do not want to be worrying about heating and cooling. So us with vented soffits, and putting the insulation on the top of the drywall, what, no matter what it is, whether it's a, a bat insulation, blown in, spray foam, open cell, again, so you uh, aren't creating condensation issues, and then more uh, blown in cellulose or something, um, that's a much better way for us to go just because of the huge cubic volume that we have up in here. And again, we're making the local codes happy by achieving at least a minimum of an R49 instead of trying to get away with like an R49 of some sort of a closed cell spray foam on the other side of the decking. So again, hopefully if we come into some money or uh, just pay off one of my credit cards that I've got some money on right now over the next couple of weeks, um, we could finish out the drywall and then we could have a local spray foam come Company, hopefully come up in here and their hoses are long enough because we're gonna put a uh, access hatch up in here only in the master bedroom closet we're not gonna put a hatch anywhere obviously in the living room or the kitchen or anything like that so he would have to go over there come up all the way over here this would be the furthest corner over here and their truck would be outside so they they're gonna have to have at least two 250 feet of hose to be able to get up in here and do that um, or maybe just do it one segment at a time uh, maybe just close off this wall over here and just focus on this right here. That way they can just hit all the way around the perimeters, hit this wall over here, and then they can come back later and do the master bedroom and the closet and the bathroom. And then lastly, they can go ahead and spray these scissor trusses because that's actually my biggest concern about getting insulation and air sealing when we're dealing with these uh, corners over here or these uh, where it tapers to a real sharp point as opposed to a lot of room over here where the eaves are with the, the flat common trusses. So uh, again, I think I'm gonna wrap this video up here. Um, we'll just call this like part one of probably three. We'll go ahead and hit that next week over there. We'll go ahead and hit this uh, at a later time when we're able to rent that 15 footer. And uh, obviously we need to purchase more drywall because we only got about maybe seven or eight sheets left. And uh, we're gonna need at least 40, 48 or so I think I calculated to do the entire house and we only bought 24. So basically we're only halfway there on drywall, but uh, it depends how much we're wasting and using. So anyway, I'm gonna wrap this one up here. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Let me know if uh, open cell, again, spray foam is the way to go to seal all of the edges and to really insulate this wall on the back of the drywall so we achieve at least an R49 to an R60. Um, what do you guys think about these fiberglass or mineral wool hats? Again, not my idea. I saw that on YouTube years ago and uh, I've had them saved literally on my Amazon wish list for at least five or six years now to when I saw that video. Uh, I just thought it was a really good idea and uh, they'll really help with, again, not catching fire on at least an LED. But if you are using these, they do make these things in a much bigger like bucket type thing and they do make them up to like almost 20 20 or $30 a piece. And those are actually like uh, a class one fire rated ones. And those I would be putting over top of your old school pot lights that get like hundreds of degrees Fahrenheit there.
there. They're very, very dangerous and very hot in my opinion. So I will see you guys next time uh, later in the week again. We will wrap this up, uh, hopefully the ceiling drywall and everything uh, for another uh, part two. And uh, we'll just keep going from there. So until then, uh, hit us up on Neck of the Woods on Instagram, Neck of the Woods 2020. Comment if you guys got anything to say or some advice for us and uh, hit the like button if you liked it. So until then, we'll see you guys next time. Take care.